Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you how to remove a tire and put a tire back on your car. Although this seems very simple, this is a fundamental piece of how to fix your car. Most of the time you're going to be taking the tire off to get to suspension pieces, to get to the brakes, whatever the case may be. And if you need to take the tire off to fix it, it's important to know how to do it properly so you don't get hurt and so that you secure the vehicle safely. I'll be giving you some tips and tricks to make the job easier and I'll show you all the tools that I use to make my life easier. Lifting your car should be something easy to do. If you dread lifting your car, you're going to hate working on your car. For me, it takes a couple of seconds. It's really easy to do, so I don't mind getting under my car and lifting it up every once in a while. Today I'm going to show you how to take the tire off a van, but it doesn't matter. Van, car, truck, they're pretty much all the same. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the back tire, because we're lifting up the front. You want to make sure your vehicle doesn't roll anywhere when you lift the front tires up, so make sure you secure the emergency brake. You have it in park or you have it in first if you have a stick. And then get your two blocks of wood, one in the front and one in the rear. This will make sure that the vehicle doesn't go anywhere when you lift the front up. So after you do that and your vehicle is secure, we have to loosen the lug nuts with the tire on the ground. You can see on this rim, the lug nuts are actually covered by this plate, but that's not the case on all rims. With the rim on my truck, you can see the lug nuts are actually exposed, so you could get right in there. But that doesn't really matter, because all you do is you get your flathead screwdriver in here, and you just pry it up a little bit in that little slot that they provide you. And you have access to your lug nuts. Some vehicles only have four lug nuts. I'd say five is the most common, and some have six. To get these lug nuts off, you can use a couple different tools. One of them is a tire iron. This is the classic tire iron. You can see this one is 3 16 or 3 quarters. The lug nuts that come on this vehicle are 3 quarters and most of the American vehicles that I work on, even the foreign vehicles, they're usually 3 quarters as well. So with the tire iron, all you do is find the 3 quarters and you put it on. Now you grab one hand here, one hand down here, and you turn, just like that. And the good thing about this is it comes off really easy because you could just spin it like that and pull the lug nut right off. Sometimes these lug nuts are on pretty tight. On your vehicle it might be on really tight because you went to a mechanic and they used an impact gun and they didn't torque it properly. I see that all the time. And then it becomes really difficult to get these off. The tire iron is definitely a good tool if you torque them correctly, but if they're too tight, you don't have a long enough bar here to get good torque to break them loose. So instead what I use, I use an actual breaker bar. This is way longer than this tire iron. It gives you an extra almost foot length, which gives you a lot more torque. All you do is get an extension, get your three-quarter socket, you slide the breaker bar and socket over one of the lug nuts, and it comes off easy. Otherwise, those would be a pain to get off. You could hear some of them made a noise while I was turning it. Those were torqued on pretty tight, and it might have been difficult getting them off without a breaker bar. So with all these lug nuts loose, we're going to lift the vehicle. The reason why we keep them on is because right now there's a lot of pressure on this tire. If we loosen the lug nuts and we're on a tilt or something, the tire could fall off and the vehicle could drop. So here's everything you'll need to lift your vehicle. I like using a quick pump jack, it makes your life easier. You can see with a couple of pumps, the jack will lift the car up really quickly. Obviously with the weight of the vehicle, it's not that fast, but you can see it does lift it up quickly. You also want to make sure you have a pair of jack stands that could support the weight of your vehicle. This is 4,500 pounds, which is no problem for my van. And just to show you guys who don't know, you turn the handle here, counterclockwise and then the jack will lower and then when you want to raise the vehicle you twist this clockwise until you can't twist it anymore and that makes it so that you could lift the vehicle up. So a little trick that I have, I use pieces of wood, in this case I use plywood. The plywood protects the driveway because when you have the weight of the vehicle on the jack and specifically when you have the weight of the vehicle on these jack stand edges here that go into the ground, there's very little surface area here so these will like sink into your driveway and damage your driveway. For where you're supposed to jack up your car, consult your owner's manual. In my case, I'm jacking it up from the engine cradle in the front. This will lift both tires up evenly and quickly. And since I'm doing a front brake job, I'll only have to lift the car once. So now we're going to go underneath the vehicle. And here's the jack puck where you jack the car up from. You want to be very careful. Not everything underneath the car is meant to have pressure on it, especially the weight of the vehicle. So definitely consult your owner's manual to see where you're supposed to jack up your vehicle. Typically, if you have a front differential or a rear differential, it's safe to jack up your vehicle from the bottom of the differential. You can see I'm jacking it up right there, but close right behind it is the oil pan. And if you didn't know what you are doing and you put your jack on there, you'd crush the oil pan and maybe cause major damage. And right behind the oil pan is another flat surface, and that's the transmission oil pan. Another thing that you don't want to jack up on. And then right next to the oil pan is this catalytic converter, another flat surface. If you try to jack it up on there, you'll cause even more damage. So definitely know where you need to jack up your vehicle. 
In my case, I'm jacking it up right from the cross member that cradles the engine. I'm right in the middle, and you can see it sits on there like that. If you have a nice car and you don't want to damage the metal, it's nice and powder coated and clean, use a piece of wood in between the jack and the metal. So if you're going to take this method to jack your vehicle up from the front or from the rear in the middle, you want to try to make sure that your jack is in the middle of the car. So when you lift it up, the car doesn't lean to one side or the other. Because sometimes if you put it too far over, the car will actually lean and you won't get the other tire off the ground. From doing this so many times, I know on this van, the jack actually has to be over a little bit. You can see the Ford emblem there. It's over to the driver's side a little, and that would be perfect. So this will lift up straight. So now you'll see how a rapid pump jack will lift your vehicle up quicker. Now with both tires up in the air, we're going to go ahead and put the jack stands under the vehicle. So you don't want to slide your whole body underneath just in case if something bad happens like the vehicle falls off the jack or the jack gives out. So to put the jack stand in, what I do is I extend my arm underneath. Just line the jack stands up onto where you need to put the jack stands. You could consult your owner's manual for that as well. In my case, there's a nice piece right here that's nice and thick. That's part of that whole cross beam that I just jacked the vehicle up on. So I'm just going to lift this up until it can't go up anymore and that side's done. I'll do the same thing for the other side. So now I'm gonna make sure that everything is clear and out of the way. I'm gonna grab the jack arm and I'm gonna twist the jack arm counterclockwise very slowly and let the vehicle drop slowly. As the vehicle drops, I'm watching the jack stands and I want it to slowly fall onto the jack stands. So once the jack stands are supporting the weight of the vehicle, I take the jack and I jack it up, but I don't lift the car. I just get it so that it touches the bottom. So if the jack stands give out for any reason, you have triple protection, two jack stands and one jack. Now before you get your tire off and do any work on your car, what you want to do is you want to shake the car like this. Give it a nice push, like you don't want to be soft, you want to be hard because you're going to be under there. So shake the car back and forth and this is solid, this isn't going anywhere. So now I can finish showing you how to take the tire off. Remember the lugs are loose, so now we're just going to take our lug wrench and twist it like that. Makes it really easy to get these lug nuts off. And this last lug nut, you have to be careful because now there's nothing holding the tire on so the tire is going to want to potentially slip off. Now to get the tire off, I find it easiest to get one hand and put it back behind here and you can grab the tire and then get your other hand and put it here. So just one hand here and one hand on the other side of the tire and it comes right off. The final thing, when you have your tire off, what you want to do is you want to slide it underneath the vehicle. By sliding the tire underneath the vehicle, that gives you another safety feature so that if the vehicle does drop, it falls on your rim and not on you. Now that you safely got the tire off, you can do whatever job that you need to get done and now I'll show you how to put the tire back on. So before you put the tire on, what I like to do is I like to put this peg at the top so I know how to align the tire properly and with that peg lined up at the top, I can line up the rim here and see that I need to move the top hole right there. Light tires are easy, you can easily lift the light tires up because they're not heavy. But if you have a big truck tire, or in this case I guess these tires are a little bit heavy, I'll show you a technique to use. So the technique that you use is you put your two feet on the side like that with your shoes on and you just rock the tire, move your foot over, just like that. Now the tire is suspended and you can easily lift with your toes and with your legs and move it around. Just get in under here. Use your feet, rock the tire up on your shoes, and then move the rim right onto the hub. Now with the tire up on the hub, one of the bolts is going to stick out the most, so you just get your lug nut on that one. Push down to expose more threads on these bottom ones. Make sure when you're putting the lug nuts on, they spin on without any resistance. If these are giving you resistance as you screw it in, that means that you're cross-threading it, and that's not good. So they should all just spin on nice and easy. And now with all the lug nuts on, push the tire to make sure that it's seated properly, and it is. So now our tire is still off the ground. The car is still raised up. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the tire iron here to try to snug it up a little bit more. You're not going to be able to tighten these all the way up in the air. So you just want to get your tire iron on here and just give it a quick turn like that. 
So I just tighten that one, and this next thing I'm about to tell you is super important. You want to go in a star pattern when you're tightening down the lug nuts. I just tighten that one down. You could pick that one or that one, the next one. So you go from this one to that one, that one to that one, that one to that one, that one to that one. You go in a star pattern to evenly tighten the wheel to the hub. So pretty much tighten the opposite lug nut. So I tighten that one. Now let's tighten this one. Again, you just get it snug and then a quick jerk. Tighten it and then quick jerk. And now I tighten that one, that one, that one. We're going to go across to this one. Tighten it up. Quick jerk. And then the last one is right down here. Tighten that up. Quick jerk. And you can see also the tire actually spins while it's in the air. So you're not going to be able to tighten this all the way with the car in the air. But you definitely want to tighten it as much as you can so when you lower the car the wheel's tight against the hub, and the wheel can't move outwards due to loose lug nuts. If the lug nuts are loose when you lower the car on the ground, the wheel could be crooked, and you won't be able to get the right torque specs when you're tightening the lug nuts. So now just jack the car up. Since we have our jack already where it needs to be, you just give it a few pumps. To get the jack stands to fall down, you just pull this up, and then we can take them out. Now the key when lowering this, you want to turn this counterclockwise and you want to go slow because you don't want to drop the car on the ground. Good. So with the tires on the ground and all the jack stands and the jack off the car, we're going to tighten these lug nuts down. To tighten these down, what I'm going to use is a torque wrench. A torque wrench allows you to properly tighten each bolt to the correct torque. Most rims are about 100 foot-pounds. I know this rim is 100 foot-pounds. I've worked on an Audi and it's 90 foot-pounds. My truck is 100 foot-pounds. It all varies, but very slightly for rims. So you want to find your torque spec. Find the 100 mark here. Tighten it up to the 100 mark. Once we get the zero to that line, that's 100. Good. Tighten down the end here. We have our three quarters on here. And we're going to go in a star pattern. So now when we torque these down, we want to make sure that these are tight first. If you're able to tighten these easily, then keep tightening them and go in a star pattern. So here, 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 and then here. We got these lug nuts tight enough when the car was up in the air, so now we're going to tighten them all the way and torque them. So we're going to start with the top one here, and we're going to go in a star pattern. We're going to wait for a click. When we hear a click, we're done. Okay, so we're at this top one here. Now we're going to go to the bottom one. Star pattern. Now we're going to go to the one over here. One across from that one. And the one down here. Now we're going to check one more time because sometimes the rim will seat and it'll actually sit on top of the hub better and leave some space so these could be torqued down more. So we're going to just check one more time. You can see these could be tightened just a little bit more. That one was pretty tight. That one was pretty tight. And that one was pretty tight. So now we could get our cover. This is pretty easy. This just centers there. And you just tap it in like that. We could go back here and kick these out. The front one came out really easy, but sometimes one of them will be really hard to get out. And what you do is you just get your heel And you just kick it out just like that. And that's how you take the tire off and put the tire back on pretty much any vehicle. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. If you have your own suggestions or some method that you use, put it in the comments below. Up on the screen are going to be a couple of how-to videos. You could click on those videos or find the links to those videos in the description below. Also in the description below are going to be the links to the Chris Fix Facebook and Twitter pages. Check it out.